And speaking of alcohol, illicit alcohol, killer brews, toxic brews, and most recently, second-generation alcohol. Well, for many of us, these are names that are given to alcohol said to cause death and despair in many parts of the country. But do we know what they really mean? And where do we draw the line? And most importantly, is the war being fought against illicit alcohol targeting the wrong enemy? Well, KTN's Dorcas Wangira sought to demystify the alcohol menace and the war it's triggered. For years, even before we could understand the modern science behind alcohol, we have been drinking. Past generations had names like Muratina, Busa, Amalwa, Mnazi and Mahalange. Today we have refined brands of spirit, beer and wine. When death by liquor grew to endemic levels, we found new names. Illicit alcohol, killer brew, methanol, toxic brew and most recently second generation alcohol. But what's the difference? Or are these just terms we choose to flaunt? Organic chemistry has answers. If we look at how carbon combines with other elements, we will understand the science of alcohol. When alkanes, that is gases like ethane and butane, get heavy, they become liquid, such as petrol. Add water to an alkane and you have an alcohol. Methanol isn't fit for human consumption. It's extremely difficult to make and is the culprit behind blindness. Ethanol is suitable for human consumption and produced from anything that has sugar, such as like maize and barley, fruits and molasses. Here in Western, molasses are the king in ethanol production because of their high sugar quantity. Well, this is just a mini distillery at Chandumba in Western Kenya, the only brewery of its kind. It's not a big venture as EABL or even Keroche, but here we can at least find those answers. The process of alcohol has to do with fermentation, with yeast and distillation. Alcohol from molasses must be distilled. Here, we learn fractional distillation is employed to get beer, spirits, wine, brandy, more concentrated ethanol forms. The higher the alcohol, the more it has to be diluted. So whether it's Scottish scotch, French champagne, or Ugandan waragi, all of it is alcohol. The difference is in the taste and the treatment process as well as the period. Processing ethanol can sometimes result in extremely tiny amounts of methanol, depending on the material and fermentation. Wines and beers have higher amounts than spirit, and that's where killer and toxic brews come in. They are produced unhygienically and deceitfully, using additives like battery acid, formalin, and methanol, something unlicensed brewers and counterfeiters use because they have neither equipment nor technique nor the patience to mature alcohol. James Luchacha owns this licensed, certified, and compliant mini distillery. His license has been suspended after the president's directive. Even if you have a license, it is your business as the county commissioner because my license is revoked. All right? It pales compared to the bustling plant we reported about last year. All the employees and contract staff, mostly women, have no jobs for now. He, an engineer who pioneered massive Mumias projects, has visited distilleries around the world. He assures me that nobody in Kenya is able to produce second generation alcohol on an industrial scale, let alone use it. Ethanol, food-grade alcohol, he says, is denatured in countries like Brazil and France to get fuel that has a higher energy content. Producing this uses cellulose found in grass and wood, something we don't do yet. But the war now clearly targets even licensed operators. Something small-scale players says is misdirected. Granted. Why would a factory that is licensed and pays tax and is certified by the Kenya Bureau of Standards poison its consumers? You can be sure the people that produce counterfeits and, and that poisoned alcohol are laughing all the way to the bank because the people who are producing proper alcohol have not been stifled. They have been declared as buccaneers. There is no second generation alcohols which is fit for human consumption. Pour liquor into, into streams and rivers, you are going to affect the local flora and fauna. Fish are going to die, crabs are going to die, whatever is that water is going to be affected. So to me, pouring spirit into 
the ecosystem is an, an environmental disaster. The bar owner is only a trader selling somewhere else. So we must deal with this thing from the source. Whether it's uh, caps, whether it's Nakada, we are requesting them to deal with this thing from the source. These bars, ambao ukiona imelaisensiwa, imekaguliwa, na kama kuna mutu anafanya kazi mbaya ndani ya uma, go to the police, go and report to the police. My country that does not respect the rule of law is not a country at all. We must respect the rule of law. It's only when we understand when the rain started beating us and identify the enemy within and without that we can win the war. Otherwise, demonizing and crippling small-scale alcohol manufacturers will just be pruning and opening a larger Pandora's box. Dorcas Wangira, KTN, Kakamega.